Morning, my latest Dealbook column in the New York Times, taking a look at the lack of board diversity among private companies. We spent a lot of time talking about diversity among publicly traded companies, but according to some new research by the Board Diversity Action Alliance, of the 4,700 board seats at companies that were funded by the top 18 venture capital and private equity firms that have gone public over the last two decades, only 49, I'm going to say that again, 4,700 board seats, only 49 of them have been held by black directors, just 1% of those thousands of positions since 2000. Joining us right now uh, to talk about it, uh, the two people behind that research, Gabby Sulzberger, one of the few female black directors in the country. She's managing director at Two Sigma, senior advisor at Center Bridge Partners. So many others serves on the boards of Eli Lilly, MasterCard, Warby Parker. Ursula Burns is here as well, former CEO of Xerox. She is also a board member at ExxonMobil, uh, Datto, Uber, and so many others. Good morning to both of you. Um, Morning. Gabby, how did, how did this research begin? What, what led you to, to start looking at this? Yeah, so um, Ursula and I both have been focused on these issues around diversity and boards for a number of years, actually. And, um, but we became increasingly interested in, um, in private companies because they don't have the same kind of regulatory accountability. And um, I've been in the private equity industry for really for, for all my career. And so as we approach the work, you know, I have to say um, our, um, my expectations, I think, were realistic or I thought they were. Um, but we were both really disheartened because, as you say, the numbers with regard to blacks on boards um, is, are extremely low, 49, just about 1%. But that's not even the full picture, because we also looked at the numbers as it relates to the C-suites. And you look at the same 843 companies that went public, you know, that were part of these um, 18 firms' portfolio, and that's about 3,800 executives, you know, not just CEOs, CFOs, general counsel, heads of HR. And of all of those companies, there were only 25 black executives. So when you put that together, the combination of uh, of, of blacks on boards and, and blacks in the C-suite, the, the leadership of these companies, these companies that have such an outsized impact to our economy, this, you know, it's t over $10 trillion in market cap, and, and companies that are it's such important innovators and disruptors and, and also such important role models, really, for the rest right. of tech, for the rest of Silicon Valley. Um, so, so the impact that these companies have can't be underestimated. And, and, and as you say, it's this, the diversity or the lack thereof, both in the boards and in the senior leadership, really was of significant concern to us. Hey, Ursula, what do you think is happening here? And, and, the, and one of the things that makes this, to me, so important is you talk about culture and creating cultures has to actually happen at its infancy. And so we often talk about what these publicly traded companies are doing now, but oftentimes this is happening sort of last minute, right before they go mm -hmm. public. We now have so many, you know, NASDAQ is requiring diversity as you go public. Goldman Sachs doing the same. There are a number of private equity firms that are actually uh, trying to do this as well, but it all seems sort of at the end, not at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andrew, you're so right. I mean, what's happening is that you know, people do business and, f and, and take risks with people that they know. So if you're starting a new company, if you're trying to raise a fund, whatever you're doing, you go to the people that you feel the most comfortable with. They may not necessarily be the most skilled or the best, but they are people that you know. And this data, these data shows exactly that. There's not a lot of effort being look, put into reaching far from your close to home. You're, you're, you're staying very close to home, people you went to college with, people you've done business with in the past, et cetera. And so I don't think that there is an active, like, let's keep these guys out. There's not an active move to that, but there is literally no affirmative move right now, or it's just starting, to get difference in. We talked about African-Americans. Latinx is as bad. If you talk about gender mixed with any of those, it's almost impossible to find. So gender, black, Latinx, almost zero. Latinx, very, very, very small. Black, African-American, you, you see the data. And surprisingly or encouragingly, if you look at the data for women, 
Um, after a couple of fits and starts in the earlier part of the of the century, um, what we see is a pickup here, a pickup in women, just about all exclusively white women, still way behind where they have to be, but with a concerted effort, um, they the numbers from a woman's uh, gender perspective is improving. Blacks, it's we have to get on this. We have to. I say it all the time, we have to be affirmative in our actions if we want to change these outcomes. 